feel better talking about? Yeah, like I got some big thing out of my chest. It's just sad, very sad. Well, that's beyond sad. Sad does not even cover half of what I do. So anyways, what we've done so far, I don't know if you can see it, but in the back there, there's a small VHF antenna. We've hooked our AIS to that and we are getting some signal through. So it's getting voltage, but no status. Now, I used to like Vesper before. But now I don't like them because they put really, really cheap connectors on things. That is the one thing that I, I do not like about companies. They have an expensive product and they put the cheapest connectors on there. All the customers see is the connectors. And they put the worst goddamn connectors on there. If there is another company out there, um, I just had my friend buy one of their units. I'm going to take a look at that one closely and uh, I'll let you know what to buy next time. One more time, and then we'll check to see if it works. Connector, lost one of its pins, and now I'm trying to hardwire directly into it. It should be done. Now we can plug it in and hopefully we'll uh, get a couple green lights. So we rewired the inside of the box and now we're just going straight into the box rather than through the connector because they bought cheap connectors on this box. So it's working again. Yay! Can't hold. Fill my work area and say what a mess you made. But I said no, you're doing really, really well. In well, these crazy I'm going to clean it all up. You can film it in just like three minutes, four minutes, and it'll all be cleaned up. I just have to uh, take over this hole because I do not want anything to happen to the insides of our AIS now that I actually got it working. And now, lucky for us, the AIS is working, and we can actually see one planet coming in to give us 260 liters of fuel. We also got our radar up and it's working now. My wife is very happy about that. And uh, everything's going smooth. We got our fuel on board, all the extra fuel to get us all the way. There's what the front looks like. It's bad. But, oh, you can see here, we had to tie this like this. We got a winch. We had to crank this one back because this part here was all the way back about seven more feet. And the, this was hanging off the back seven more feet. So it was hitting the water all the time. So we put a winch on it and we dragged it forward. Actually, I had the rope around 
the uh, where the wind generator was situated and I dragged it to a point and then I found out that I couldn't drag it anymore so I had to bang off the well I drilled out the um, rivets on the wind generator platform and then took that off and then I hooked it around where the the boom the end of the boom is coming against and then I put that on the winch and I just dragged this thing back on so that it wasn't dragging in the water because there's a triadic that goes from the top of the main to the top of the mizzen and I can't cut it unless I get in the water and I don't really want to get in the water that would be nuts so I dragged this back on and that's it so we continue to move I want to show something so when we knew that the mizzen mast is gonna fall Ken started ripping the bimini off but I begged him to stop because I thought that if it's gonna pop it can hit him in the face and the chest anywhere with a mask and so anyways it ripped all the bimini off with all the metal things uh, but this one look how nested now this winch is all the mizzen mast you can see how bent is this metal uh, yeah because we pulled it on yeah we pulled it forward yeah and now it's kind of like nested so the winch do it doesn't even jump that much before it was jumping and I was holding there and I almost got my finger smashed between those two metals and uh, can you imagine you can see how close is by the exit this uh, mast now I put the towel so it doesn't uh, it was really really sharp yeah that was a good idea and uh, it was constantly catching our, our clothes and everything and it was very sharp if, if you hit it and you know you constantly hit something because it was rocking. So yeah, this uh, and can you imagine if this metal stay wasn't there and this winch wouldn't be, wouldn't be nested, this mast also could hit the wave and just come back and hit you in the head when you're trying to get out from to the cockpit or in the. So yeah, this was um, man. Still cannot believe that happened but now at least I don't think that I keep dreaming and I'm I mean for the first two days I was in a state of shock I just couldn't believe it happened and I probably need to clean my glasses but I don't care then yeah I understand how lucky we are that we are both alive and not injured It's a uh, close to miracle, you know, being on such a small platform, you know, in, at that night when Ken was trying to secure the main mast so it would stop banging because we really wanted to save a mizzen. And he was outside and it was just, I couldn't imagine if something happens to him. I wouldn't want to continue. So yeah. We are very lucky. But now, I mean, it's shit. <laughs> it's fun. You're, you're right. But yesterday, I was so, so impressed by, the, by that catamaran. It's called One Planet. Beautiful new Sun Reef 70. The crew and the captain, they did everything for us. Uh, they were so professional. And the other thing, I had no idea that it's going to be so difficult to pull out those cherry cans. And thank goodness they were five of them. So can you imagine if we would be understaffed and somebody else, we had people w willing to help us to come from Grenada and uh, from anywhere. It's just so much more, you know, they have big catamaran, like big white platforms. It's not like they have narrow decks like we do. And we have so much stuff on our decks now. We barely can find where to put the foot without getting tangled into something. Yeah, crazy, crazy. 
crazy, crazy. I cannot believe this happened. Hmm, here we go. Just. I want to go more. You want to say something? Yeah. The other thing I've been thinking a lot. So, number one, we are extremely happy to have Starling. And uh, we are extremely happy that it still works to this minute. And uh, when we were in Cape Verde, I was very interested walking around looking how many people have Starlings and which Starlings they have, Marine or RV version, and where they mounted them. So ours was mounted, so in our videos it was sitting in the middle of a yoga band above the mast bedroom. And I think our outboard that is so safely secured, that was kicked out from the I think it's shroud. The shroud wrapped yeah. it and then pulled it out. I think the shroud, shroud. So on this side, that's where the mast fell, both of them. So, and you know, our Genoa is still attached to the mast up top, and it's also attached at the bottom. So, it's big angle, like a V. So I have no idea where, you know, we were thinking maybe to put the, on the solar panels, the Starlink, but our solar panels are also done. So where do you put the Starlink? Now I heard rumors that uh, Elon will come up with a Starlink the size that uh, fits in the backpack. I'm going to pay whatever it's going to cost because this thing is saving our... Absolutely. This thing is saving our little asses right now in this dreary situation and um, you know, I haven't been replying most, I haven't been reading for two days, I haven't been even reading most of the comments with so many. Thank you to all of you. Thank you to donations that we got couple and uh, but your support, your words is just like, um, I don't know, it's a little bit of a drop of I don't know, some, something good in our misery, miserable lives. So, without Starlink, of course we wouldn't be doing updates. But uh, without Starlink, you know, we are looking at other opportunities. We're talking to our dear friends and family, you know, making sure that they are okay because they are even more worried. You know, we have no time to be worried. For at least three days, we had no time to be worried. We had no no desire to eat. We had no. no we couldn't sleep. We couldn't no sleep. No sleep for three days. No eat for three days. We're just. I had banana. Maybe. We're yeah. just running. Yeah. Trying to like tie down this, tie down that, make this stronger. It's just like you can and see, then, it's like spaghetti. It's just trying to make sure that nothing is moving too far. And then you kind of like tighten up one end that's and then the other end starts getting a little bit more like i don't know waggly whatever so and then we secured everything already but this night was very rolly and uh, i don't know i was so scared that this main mass could go through that line rail where it ripped from the deck and i thought if that would go down there, we definitely sink. There's no way to detach it. And we do have the the device to actually cut all the the shrouds. So it's a it's like basically a gun, and we can we can cut cut the shrouds. But uh, I don't think it's done. And all our lines. They look absolutely solid, but as you know, it's not for me to do those. I just, we walk and we look like what could go wrong. And uh, as we said, we don't know. We don't know what went wrong. Can't wait to see what the inspection will find out, what the surveys will say. So we were thinking in the beginning, you know, this process when it goes like you, all these thoughts are going through your mind. That's why you, you have no time to worry, no time to think about your hunger or whatever. I was thinking that maybe we should take a wrench and start taking apart all the all the trouts, you know, just in case one now starts sliding. But I think 
think for insurance purposes it's better to leave on and maybe we can reuse some of that because as no, I said we can never reuse them but they look so good you never reuse them anyways what do I know so yeah she's still taking good care of it of us I can't imagine how strong is this cockpit insane Insane. Yeah, I still think that Amal has a great boat. Yeah. I just uh, really want to know why that failed. And um, I think that uh, we might have to get new maps. So here's where our Starling currently nested. It took a long, long conversation for us where we're going to put it. Because we understood how important it is to have connection normal connection like a decent speed internet looking for the winds because especially now winds are super important but you know as you can see we kind of contained our sails luckily it wasn't too windy when this happened so we were able to contain the sails and uh, yeah but if it would be like now 30 knots of wind it still would be uh, I think Javila sent out a post yeah, about so two hours before. Yeah, it was about two hours. And it was showing 11 knots um, apparent. 5.4 speed. Yeah. But again, if it would be small, we wouldn't be able to contain those sails as nicely as they are. Yeah. And I was able to get a rope around the sail. And that's the only reason why nothing hit the water is because I got a rope around the, the the Genoa quick and I just pulled that all together and then, you know, everything came down after that. That was, I got a rope around the, the, the main or at the Genoa before the, the mizzen came down. Way before. Yeah, way because before. We, we already were trying to secure the top of the main. So yeah. stop hitting, we would stop hitting the... At that point, we already were trying to put maybe like third line up top. Uh, maybe like... Uh, so it would stop hitting the mizzen mast because it was just slamming it. it the boat was rocking. Uh, we lost all of, you know, our stability. We just started the engine, but, uh, but uh, it, it wasn't enough. Um, so yeah, and... You said the, well, I saw it too, but it's just for me, all of this I still need to process. It takes time, I know we have some videos, but the mask snapped and then it slowly buckled because I think it was slowly ripping the Genoa down and uh, going forwards because of the triadic uh, shroud that connects missing to the main. I think it was just going forwards uh, Mizzenmast. Yeah, so when the when the um, main broke at the uh, about four feet above the, the bottom, five feet above the bottom of the main, it buckled. Then the triadic kept it up for a while and it just kept slamming into the, the, the mizzen and that's what brought the mizzen down. Because not until the triadic is, is uh, cut, the main can't come down. Good hole, like whatever all of them I can see around as far as I could. So yeah, we have a couple of places, at least one. Uh, in the front V berth, we have a hole in the deck, and can say that the hole is like this big. And I take that up with some aqua tape. Yeah, we filmed it, and. Uh, I felt, I kind of felt where we keep our headsets and flashlights and batteries and that seemed like it's wet too, so I opened it up. Maybe there is another hole, but um, that's where the boom. So I went in there and felt again, I didn't feel anything. Yeah, so anyways, our main mast that was, uh, was it full sail? Was it full sail on the main? Anyways. Yes. So the main mast, which was with a 
tail. That all landed on a board inside, so that's what we see through the salon windows. Sailing Aquarius logo that keeps, keeps hurting. So yeah, but uh, that's where the mast uh, boom and the mast is. So maybe there is another hole in the deck, but we don't see it yet. I wasn't sure that this radar will be good enough because it's so low. Oh, you can see what we have to deal with with all the sounds and all the, the joys of our current reality. It's very difficult to do the watches because as you can see, now we even got to the point where we feel it's sort of okay and safe to sit here before it was uh, this was moving way too much the genoa um, it felt like and the sounds you know that was making it seemed like it's gonna break any second so it was insanely unsafe to and this was moving way too much uh, but now we with every day we keep um, tightening things slowly so they kind of settled more or less in more solid places but before we couldn't sit in the cockpit and it's so difficult to do watches and you know we don't have most of the lights we don't have our steaming lights we don't have mast lights we just have the the deck lights for nav navigation so first night it was like i felt we do and to do the night watch to see up front fully uh, you have to stand up where Ken is sitting and get out and with all these ports and the whatever it's really nothing much to hold on to so yeah it was really really difficult to do the, the watches and uh, we didn't feel safe staying in the cockpit and uh, you hear all the terrible noises now before it was five times more I would say because everything was moving five times more. So. Left to you. Well, that's about it. We'll try to post this soon so you guys get a good idea of where we're at. But uh, everything looks okay. I hope we make it. But we do have our ditch bags. Um, wish us well. If you can help us out, um, we need some masks. So we need to find a place to get some masks. I don't think they can reuse these masks. If anybody knows of a derelict Super Maramu 2000 or somebody, we heard about three. One in Panama what, that was on fire and two derelicts. One in the uh, Dominican Republic and the third one is in, supposedly in Trinidad. We're trying to get more information on those but uh, nothing as of details yet. So if you know any, please let us know. Thanks.